everybody, it's me, uh, Will Doublestein with Bowtie Music. Um, I'm really excited to share something with the music teachers today. Uh, and that is my uh, newly updated composition project. Uh, this is something that I've been working on for the past four or five years. I've really tried to perfect this project. It has been tough, but uh, last year we did a version of this. It went really well, and I've even uh, made some improvements since then. Uh, and it's something that uh, I really couldn't be more excited about. Um, this is a way to give students in upper elementary full control of the music making process um, using ORF instruments. So if you have, uh, you know, instruments like these, xylophones, metallophones, glockenspiels, uh, any kind of ORF instrument, this project uh, will use that to give students the chance to uh, uh, compose, compose their own song. It's a 16-beat composition, uh, and I have uh, in the resource uh, 13 steps to get there. Guys, you need all 13 steps, trust me. Com uh, composing is tough, and when you're talking about fourth or fifth grade, um, you've really got to use a step-by-step -step process to keep everybody on the same page. But at the same time, like not trying to stifle their creativity. So allowing, so for, uh, allowing room for the students uh, to make their own decisions. And that's what I think this project does so well. So let me give you a quick little preview about how this works. Um, you've got a few different um, papers here. Uh, the first two are directions, and there's 13 steps to this project. Uh, and then we have a rhythm worksheet. Now we'll start here. And I'm actually going to walk you through this entire process. So, in the directions, your first, uh, your first step is to fill in these beats. And I am using hearts to represent the beats. To fill in the beats uh, using quarter notes, eighth notes, quarter rests, uh, half notes, half rests, or sixteenth notes. So if you have sixteen beats, uh, you know, you can do there. There's your first uh, your first measure. Okay? A ta ta ti 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 ti. Quarter note, quarter note, two eighth notes, two eighth notes. So the first step that I would uh, have the students complete is doing the entire uh, entire four measure or 16 beat um, piece as a rhythm composition. Really, it's not too tough. Uh, what you need to remind them to do is make sure they put the note heads right over the one line staff. Uh, we are in 4-4 four, four time signature. Uh, if they have a half note, you want to use a um, both the first beat and the beat next to it. You kind of leave that one blank because a half note takes two beats. Okay, then step two is you're going to do some lyric prep. So I've noticed that when kids write lyrics, they have to understand how many notes are in each beat. Now that can be tough, but that's why I've put these numbers above all the beats. Okay, so for example, in our first beat, that note has only one sound, okay, uh, or one note. Uh, in this second beat, again, it's one note. Now here, with two eighth notes inside of a beat, you're gonna have two notes. And in our fourth beat, you also have two notes. Okay, so that's the second step, is going through their entire rhythm, circling the number of notes in each beat. Step three, lyric composition. Okay, here they are going to write underneath the note uh, what their lyrics are. So for example, I might say, I love eating bacon. Okay, <laughs> which I do by the way. So I love eating bacon. Right? So it ma my lyrics match my rhythm uh, with the number of syllables. The number of syllables in each word uh, matches the number of notes in each beat. Okay, that's step three. You'll do that for the entire composition. Now, step four is you're going to practice clapping and speaking it. A big part of an ORF lesson is having text and using body percussion uh, to uh, perform your text. Now in this case, we're just gonna use clapping. So, the kids would get used to doing, I love 
eating bacon. And then the rest of their composition as well. Okay, once they've got an entire 16 beat uh, rhythm, what they're gonna do is find a mallet instrument. So, let me go grab a mallet instrument. Hmm, which one should I get? You know, I'm going to go for, I think it's Soprano Metallic. This one looks good. Okay. Now, once you've got your metallophone, we're gonna do this in C pentatonic. Uh, so that means they're going to need to remove the note B and both Fs. That would be Fa and T using solfege. So uh, we, we will have, we'll be left with Do, Re, Mi, So, La, or in letter names, that's C, D, E, G, and A. C pentatonic. Okay, step six. Instead of clapping their rhythm, the students are going to improvise it on the mallet instruments. Make sure that they're still speaking uh, the text as they go, speaking their lyrics as they go. Uh, and let them improvise it several times in all different ways. So for example, I love eating bacon, right? <laughs> or they could start up here. I love eating bacon. Doesn't matter. They have them do it three or four times in all different ways. I love eating bacon. That's step six. Moving on to step seven. Now the kids are gonna get ready with some other worksheets. The next worksheet in your project is a notation diagram. This worksheet is going to show exactly where each pitch in the pentatonic scale is located on your instrument. Um, you're also going to need this melody composition worksheet, which as you'll notice is very similar to the rhythm uh, worksheet, except now instead of a one line staff, you have a five line staff. Um, so the next, uh, yeah, so step seven is simply to have all three worksheets available and ready to go. Step eight. Okay, now we're gonna start our melody. And when you do, we need to have a tonal center. We're in C pentatonic and therefore our tonal center is C. You know, you're gonna have to talk about that. What is a tonal center, okay? It means that you're wanting your song to sound complete, to sound finished. And so in order to be in C pentatonic, our first and our last note needs to be C. Doesn't matter if you want the low C or the high C, just make sure you get a C. So I'm gonna start on a low C. And right there, boom, I have my first note. Now the students will have all 16 notes filled out, so they'll also wanna fill in a C for their very last note. Okay, uh, step nine. Step nine is more of a teaching step. You as the teacher are going to have to review what stepwise motion is. This might take an entire lesson to do and that's okay. Take the time to get it done. It's so important that the students' compositions don't jump all over the place. You don't want your melody to go from low to high to low to high all over. The, they won't remember it for one and for two is it's not gonna sound very musical. It's just gonna sound like Okay, not bad, but not necessarily something you would wanna sing, okay? And for that reason, step nine is to simply review what stepwise motion is. Explain that a step is when you go from one note to the next note right above or below it. A skip is when you skip multiple notes in order to get to somewhere else, okay? In this project, you can have a few skips, but don't have skips all over the place. Now, step 10, you get to compose. Finally, you get to fill in the rest of your melody. Now, my original rhythm was I like eating bacon, right? Oh, I'm sorry, I love eating bacon. Okay, right. So, I'm going to use stepwise motion and do I 
love. I'll go from a C to a D. And they have this worksheet right here to help them know what letter goes where. Okay. I, and I can even write in the lyrics, love. Uh, let's do eating on an E. And I'm gonna do a skip now. I'm gonna go down to the C again. Boom, and right like that, you already have the start of your melody. So, I'll play it for you. I love eating bacon. See how musical that sounds? And it's easy to sing, too. You'll do that for all 16 beats of your melody. Then, step 11, you're gonna transfer those lyrics underneath your entire composition. And step 12, you're going to write above each note what letter it is. So for example, C, D, E, E, C, C. And the reason we do that is because I've noticed when students then go back to play their compositions, you know, they're gonna need some help by having the notes written in. C, D, E, E, C, C is gonna allow them to move much more quickly than trying to read each individual note and going back to here, especially if they're not used to reading notes all the time. For step 13, all they're gonna do is check it over. They're gonna look and make sure they've used a tonal center, starting and ending on C, that they've used mostly stepwise motion, meaning not too many skips all over the place. They're gonna make sure their lyrics are correct, their rhythm is correct, and their letter names are correct. From there, I've also provided a rubric. And the rubric grades each step of um, work they complete on their worksheets. So from the rhythm, to the lyrics, to the melody, <laughs> tonal center, and stepwise motion uh, for a final score out of 50 points. One thing I love about this project is that once you have it completed, you can do anything you want with it. Just think, these kids are all gonna have 16 beat melodies completely composed by them. It, could, it might be about anything from unicorns to G.I. Joes to uh, race cars to football. I mean, I mean the, the students will come up with all kinds of great ideas and they'll be proud of it because it's something they made up on their own. But here's the really neat thing about this project. Once you have their melodies, make it a performance. For example, my fourth grade performance this year will be entirely made from student compositions. Now they might decide they want it to be on ORF instruments like these, or maybe they want to take their rhythms and put it on unpitched percussion instruments like drums, or uh, what else do I have over there? Maybe claves, um, rhythm sticks, or even shakers. There's all kinds of different things they could do. Maybe they want it to be a body percussion piece where every eighth note is clapped and every quarter note is stomped. Maybe uh, every 16th note is padded. So the possibilities here are endless. You could even take multiple students and multiple uh, compositions and because they're all in C pentatonic, just string them together. You could honestly go through every single student uh, with a bass bar bordoon on C and G and you could play from one student to the end. Or maybe put them in groups. You know, maybe you have a group who does an A section on one melody and a B section on another melody. Uh, there's so many different ways you could do this. Uh, maybe a final idea is just pick one in your class. Uh, pick one melody, um, teach it to everybody, and then from there ask the students to create more, to go further, um, to create their own B section as a class or um, to make their own decisions about what instruments or how to speak it. Um, the possibilities here are endless, and so um, it's something I'm really excited about. I, I hope it's something that you can see the value in. I will tell you this, composition is tough. 
And it's for that reason that I've spent the past four or five years coming up with this project. So head on over to teacherspayteachers.com and look up my store, Bowtie Music, uh, to find this resource. If you have any questions at all, you can email me. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.